guest, Johnny Filion, is the CEO of BNP Paribas Americas. He's back with us live here on the show. It's nice to see you again. Scott, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, your stock's up today uh, off your earnings. Is the environment better for financials now? Well, as it relates to BNP Paribas, uh, you know, uh, the Q3 was uh, quite solid. Uh, volumes up, revenues up across the three divisions for the group. Uh, management of the cost line has been effective. Very low cost of risk, obviously. It's explained, you know, the good uh, 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 situation of the, of the net profit, basically. Environment is, uh, is, is contrasted. Uh, if you look at this U.S. economy here, I believe it is actually quite resilient in spite of, you know, some, soft, some you know, softening, softening you've seen recently. Uh, but spending time with CEOs most of my days, I see them confident in terms of GDP, in terms of employment, in terms of consumer spending, confidence. We'll see later next week why, what, what, it, what, it, what it really uh, does. Where I see hesitation is when it's time to look at more like medium-term investment. Mm -hmm. or uh, M&A transactions, uh, more uh, strategic, or, or CapEx. Mm -hmm. And you feel like that's obviously related to the trade uncertainty? I believe that, to your point, uh, the challenge of this economy is not so much, so much coming from the inside. It's coming from the outside. Uncertainty linked to geopolitical, political, and social tensions. Trade is one of them. Brexit could be another one. It's a longer list. I've... I've I've seen written where people have called you the most European of the Euro European banks for, because of the exposure you have in the markets that you, you do. So theoretically, you would have a, a better eye than many on what's happening in the Eurozone. Do you feel like things have bottomed or are in the process of bottoming there? I believe the bank is probably a good proxy for the Eurozone, given our lead presence there. But just before I get to your question, I think the strength of this bank is its diversified business model. Diversified geographically, diversified in terms of products, and then diversified in terms of clients. Uh, what I see happening in Europe is, is contrasted as well, meaning uh, the main challenge there is negative interest rates. Mm -hmm. It has weight on the banking system, for sure. One could argue, actually, it's probably more positive for corporates and consumers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, not, not, not so obvious at times, right? But uh, looking into Europe more deeply, you remember the peripherals? Portugal, um, mm -hmm. uh, Spain, Ireland. I mean, uh, they've recovered, you know, massively. If I look at uh, some other countries more individually, France is doing really well. Mm -hmm. Germany is a challenge on, 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 uh, on economic activity and export, but still strong. And the Nordics are actually a, a strong pillar of uh, economic growth. Then I, I, I believe that uh, the Eurozone, if, if, if we can uh, provide probably more stimulus in terms of fiscal policy, I think monetary policy might have done whatever monetary policy can bring, uh, could have actually an interesting future ahead of them. So we manage an international strategy also, and a lot of the pushback I get is the blanket statement, oh, international's terrible, Europe's a disaster. But the picture that you laid out just now, which we believe in too, shows incremental improvement across many of these European countries. What does it take to get people to appreciate and realize that there's incremental improvement? Well, it's an excellent point. I think you know what it takes, uh, and it's probably what this bank is benefiting from, it's, uh, it's to be in the field. It's to have boots on the ground. Uh, when we speak about Belgium or Italy or Luxembourg or Turkey, we own banks there. When we speak about the platform here in the United States, uh, I have 14,000 people across retail and wholesale and, you know, dealing with clients every day. Uh, it's, uh, it's a six billion revenue platform. I think it's really being connected. I don't believe so much anymore in a global firm per se, but more like in uh, what I would call multi-local. You, you have a, excuse me one second. You, you have a more substantial, say, uh, U.S. footprint than, than many European banks do, and you're looking to obviously grow that. So do you, do you see a scenario where rates are going to rise anywhere markedly from where they are now? I mean, the Fed just cut, signaled they're going to pause. I, where, where do you see it? Because that plays into the whole conversation we have every day on whether this trade that's been well received by investors and financials continues. And by the way, I think, you, I think you do it very eloquently here, and you're highlighting a lot of the different dynamic here. Well, your point is how much monetary policy can bring, particularly when you have a still mm -hmm. resilient economy here. However, 
what I think the Fed is doing here, and central bankers are fact-based. They are just as adjusting to what the overall economy is doing. You know, you cannot uh, sustainably have, like, deep, deep negative interest rates in Europe and basically totally not, not doing anything here. Mm -hmm. Having said that, mm -hmm. um, I still believe that uh, monetary policy is probably not sufficient, that, you know, fiscal policy, which, by the way, took place here with the tax reform, and maybe more engagement in, I would say, um, um, you know, uh, development such as pushing further infrastructure or investment in education or, you know, uh, revisiting health care, which probably could, uh, I would say, start uh, an other kind of spending and job creation. Job creation, by the way, the report today is quite impressive, right? Very, and probably very much above so. guidance, yeah. which I think supports this uh, belief that this economy is more resilient than anybody believes. Mm -hmm. so I completely agree. Do you want to go ahead, go ahead Jim? I completely agree that the need for fiscal stimulus is there, but you have a political and a cultural issue, particularly with Germany, that prides themselves on balanced budgets. How do you, it would be fantastic if Germany said we're going to borrow until the 10-year bund goes positive and used all that money to build infrastructure. Will they ever do that? How does that happen? How does the political will get created? I think you touched a very critical point. Beyond Germany itself, by the way, back to the future of the Eurozone, which I believe there is a real future. By the way, Brexit happening, it's already benefiting the Netherlands, mm -hmm. Germany, France, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, getting more uh, space to grow in terms of financial markets. Uh, and we need more leadership from France and Germany going forward. The challenge, what I can see from here, obviously, uh, with Germany is um, the more QE they might be doing, because uh, German, uh, you know, savers are very conservative, Mm -hmm. You would expect uh, uh, consumerism to be uh, boosted. But actually, the reaction is because more QE, more uncertainty, more prudence. And basically, it provides somewhere, somewhere the other way around. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably why there is some hesitation there. In any case, it's still a strong economy. In any case, I believe that some of the key, I hope, European countries will uh, not only uh, get more involved in fiscal policy, beyond monetary policy, and have... Uh, there is something that is missing in Europe, and I'm a big Eurozone person, you know, is uh, uh, a similar capital markets as the one we have here. Mm -hmm. When you look at the capital markets in the United States, uh, capital velocity is amazing. It helps the banking system, you know, because they can recycle their balance sheet at a faster rate. Eighty percent of the funding is coming from the capital markets here in Europe. 80% of the same funding is coming from the bank's balance sheet. Then creating a, a, a union capital market, more capital velocity, it could start with a structured securization market there. There is plenty of collateral assets to do that. Mm -hmm. It would probably be a good uh, next step. Let me, let me leave our conversation with, um, we lost someone recently that many people knew here uh, in the business world. I know you knew uh, very close, Mark Hurd. I wanted to give you an opportunity to say, um, your feelings about Mark and your relationship that you had as sort of we, we all uh, continue to grieve his loss. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Well, Mark uh, was a dear, dear friend, and I've had the privilege to know him for the last 20 years. Um, I've been impressed by his, his leadership, his leadership at Oracle, uh, wonderful personality. He was the kind of person who provided uh, simple solutions to complex problems. Um, and he has such a sense of humor, in the, even under the most tense situations. I, I, um, we had many things in common, including tennis. Mark was a huge contributor to the tennis world. I, 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 I can only say we all miss him, and I, I miss him tremendously. Right. Thank you for sharing that. It's good to see you again. Thank you for having me. Right. Johnny Filion again, uh, BNP Paribas America CEO. All right.